The Board of Trustees of the State University of Iowa, now the University of Iowa, met on January 19, 1853. As a member of the board, Robert Lucas, the former governor of the Iowa Territory, was in attendance. The following entry was placed in the minutes. Ex-Gov Lucas submitted a proposition in relation to the bones of Blackhawk, which on motion was accepted and the president of the board authorized to receive said bones, to have them properly put together, placed in a suitable case, and deposited in the state library to be preserved for the state university. Makataimi Shikaikaik was a Sauk war leader, known to the American settlers as Chief Blackhawk. The Sauk Nation, at one time, had a large domain that covered much of what is now Illinois and Iowa, as well as parts of Wisconsin and Missouri. They were removed from the Iowa Territory after 1842. How did Lucas have access to Black Hawk's remains in order to make such an offer? Black Hawk died on the third day of October 1838 at the age of 71. He was buried by his family and friends, according to his wishes, on the farm owned by James Jordan in Davis County, Iowa Territory. It seems fitting that Black Hawk was put to rest on the banks of the Des Moines River where he spent his last days among his new friends and in peace. But that was not to be. On July 3, 1839, Dr. James Turner stole Black Hawk's head. Turner removed the flesh in a large kettle owned by Jefferson Cox. He returned that fall and stole the rest of the body and sent the skeleton to Quincy, Illinois to be varnished and wired. Turner planned to make his fortune exhibiting Black Hawk's remains back east. At Lucas' request, the mayor of Quincy returned the remains to Burlington, Iowa in a large box. On January 30th, 1841, Singing Bird, Black Hawk's wife, identified the remains and left them in the governor's care. When Governor Lucas left office in 1841, he gave the box containing Black Hawk's bones to Dr. Enos Lowe so that they could be given to the soon-to-be-formed Burlington Historical and Geological Institute. The Institute was organized December 18, 1843. It was located on the third floor of a building owned by Dr. Lowe on the 300 block of North Main Street in Burlington. On January 16, 1853, three days before Lucas made his offer, a fire broke out in the Institute building. The Burlington newspaper stated that the Institute building and all of its contents were completely destroyed. Then, on February 7th, Lucas died, less than three weeks after he offered the bones to the university. Lucas may have already had the bones in Iowa City at the time of the offer, but if not, either of these events might have prevented their transfer from Burlington. The Board of Trustee minutes are kept in the Special Collections Department at the University of Iowa Library. Between Lucas' 1853 offer and when an inventory of the university's artifacts was made in 1859, there is no mention of Black Hawk's bones in the minutes. If the university had received the bones, it is likely that it would have been mentioned in a board meeting and an entry placed in the record. T.S. Parvin had been the private secretary for Robert Lucas when Lucas was the governor. Parvin became the curator and librarian for the State University of Iowa in 1859 and was the person who conducted the inventory of the artifacts. His report stated, in part, that the best of the specimens collected for the university had been destroyed in an Iowa City warehouse fire. That specimen boxes had been opened and unwrapped, labels were lost, and in one instance, entire articles carried away. 
It further stated that the small collection of Indian relics could not be found. The report made no mention of Black Hawk's bones, as might be expected if the university had received them earlier. Parvin was one of the founders of the Masons in the Iowa Territory. His diaries are held by the Masonic Library and Museum in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The diaries contain an entry on November 28, 1840, in which Parvin mentions seeing Black Hawk's bones upon their return to Iowa from Quincy, Illinois. There is no further mention of Black Hawk's remains in his diaries. Staff at the Natural History Museum at the University of Iowa reported that they were not aware of the offer concerning Black Hawk's bones. They further stated they had no records of ever having received them and have no human remains in their museum. The Office of the State Archaeologist, University of Iowa, reported that they found no records that Black Hawk's remains were ever transferred to the university or to their office. They further stated that their office has no human remains in their possession that are indicated as having belonged to Black Hawk and are confident that the university does not have them. Did the university ever have, did they ever receive Black Hawk's remains and then lost them somehow? Were they destroyed in a fire or were they stolen? Well, that possibility cannot be dismissed. A typical historical account of the fire and destruction of Black Hawk's remains can be found in the 1879 history of Des Moines County, Iowa. Governor Lucas was succeeded by Governor Chambers and the bones of Black Hawk were taken from his former office to the office of Dr. Lowe on Main Street. On the night of January 16, 1853, a fire consumed the whole building. The bones of the celebrated Indian were then and there cremated. What does the research show? Interestingly, no mention of Black Hawk's remains being destroyed were found in any of the newspaper articles that covered the fire. Also, there were reports of rumors circulating around Burlington that the bones remained intact and were safe somewhere in the city. Advertisement in the newspapers at the time of the fire shows that Dr. Lowe shared an office with Dr. McLaren, not at the site of the fire, but rather on the 300 block of North 3rd Street. If Black Hawk's remains had been in this office at the time of the fire, they would not have been destroyed. Dr. John H. Roche, who was the secretary of the Historical Institute at the time of the fire, intimated that the bones might have not been destroyed. Rather, he thought Dr. Lowe may have had them in his possession when the Institute was destroyed. A History of the Iowa Historical and Geological Institute was published in Burlington's Daily Hawkeye and Telegraph in 1856. It discussed the fire and the losses, but made no mention of Black Hawk's remains. In 1858, five years after the fire, Burlington hosted its first Old Settlers celebration in Marion Hall. One of the speakers, Henry Starr, who knew Black Hawk personally, mentioned that Black Hawk's bones remained in the possession of the Historical Society of Burlington. Starr was a cousin by marriage to Dr. Lowe's partner, Dr. McLaren, and may have had first-hand information. T.S. Parvin was the editor of the Annals of Iowa in 1865 and put a note at the end of an article on Black Hawk's bones stating that he had good reason to believe that the old chief's bones were not consumed by the fire which destroyed the valuable collection of the Historical and Geographical Society at Burlington some years since. We are credibly informed they were at the residence of an officer of said society and thus escaped that catastrophe. An article in the Burlington Daily Hawkeye on December 2nd, 1880, and one in the Daily Gazette on August 3rd, 1891, offer compelling accounts of what happened to Black Hawk's remains. The bones were not destroyed in the 1853 fire. Instead, they were safe in the office that Dr. Lowe shared with Dr. McLaren at some distance from the fire.
The box containing Blackhawk's remains made their way to Burlington's first Presbyterian church sometime in 1857 to be used for the study of human anatomy. In 1880, some workmen found them in the church basement. The parties who were acquainted with the incident of the disappearance of Black Hawk bones immediately set up a theory that these were the bones. Lane deputized a man to consign the bones to a grave at Aspen Grove. The man buried them in Potter's Field and left the grave unmarked. Staff at Burlington's Aspen Grove Cemetery report that they have no records showing that Black Hawk is buried in their Potter's Field or anywhere else in their cemetery. However, they add that detailed records were seldom kept on burials in Potter's Field. Nevertheless, an oral history shared among Aspen Grove workers asserts that Black Hawk was buried in a grave marked only by a stick in Potter's Field. Although Aspen Grove staff know the exact location of Black Hawk's grave as told in their oral history, they had been informed by others that only Black Hawk's skull had been stolen and that it had been destroyed in a fire. Based on what they had been told, they believed their oral history was not accurate, and Black Hawk's remains were not in their cemetery. However, the oral history of Aspen Grove workers is true. Black Hawk's remains were not destroyed in the fire, but rather were safely stored in a doctor's office, moved to a church, and then buried in Aspen Grove Cemetery. And Potter's Field is the final resting place of the Sauk war leader known to the American settlers as Black Hawk. In a sense, though, Black Hawk remains with the University of Iowa. Black Hawk and his two sons visited the Fort Madison Patriot, now Burlington's Hawkeye, on March 24th, 1838, to watch the printing of its first edition. It was in that edition that the paper's editor, James Clark, suggested that Iowa's nickname be the Hawkeye State to memorialize the old chief. Iowa is called the Hawkeye State in Black Hawk's honor. So every time anyone cheers on the Hawkeyes, they are invoking the memory of Ma Katai Mi Shakaikai, the old chief. <laughs> 